Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of Adobe Illustrator Tutorials. In this video, we're going to talk about the Layers panel and the Artboard panel. The Layers panel is really critical because we're going to use it a lot in everything that we do in Illustrator because you're going to need to know how to rearrange layers, how to rename layers, how to modify specific layers and do different techniques with them, and just kind of all the different features of locking them, hiding them so that you can see different aspects of your artwork. Another great feature of Illustrator is that you can have multiple artboards on a single document. So we're in Photoshop, when you wanted to open something new, it would open a new tab. In Illustrator, you can create a whole new artboard and have 30 different artboards in the same document and you can see things all together. So it's a really great feature. So we'll show you guys how to create new artboards, how to rearrange artboards and move your, art, your artwork on those artboards around. So let's go ahead and jump into it right now. The layers panel is really important in helping you stay organized when you start creating designs, especially when you have designs that have a lot of complex pieces to them or different aspects to them. You might have one image or graphic that you're creating but once you get into something more complex like a poster design and you've got titles subheaders body text graphic images background images layers textures it can get really confusing and if it's all stuck on one layer it makes it even more difficult so i'm going to show you guys just how to create layers how to navigate through the layers panel and how to move things around quite a bit so over here on my right is my workspace panel and this little double square stack is the symbol for your layers panel. So I click on that and open that up. If you don't have it in your workspace panel, if you go to your Windows drop down menu, it's right there under L for layers. So you can see right away my layers panel, I just have the one open this new document, but I've got some options down below here. The first symbol is this trash can, and that's obviously to delete a layer. So if you're done with it, or if it's blank or whatever, you just don't need that anymore you can go ahead and just delete that. Just note too, if you hit delete and there's something in it, like maybe there's like a leftover anchor point or there's an image in there that you're not aware of, it'll give you a warning and say, hey, there's artwork in here. Are you sure you want to delete this? So that's a really nice little feature just in case you forget something's in there. Uh, this next little symbol, this square with a plus sign in it, that's how you create a new layer. So if I go ahead and click on that, you can see a new layer pops up. This little symbol is create a new sub layer. So Inside this layer, once I work on layer one, let's say, and I create, I'm just going to draw a couple of shapes here. And you can see that layer has changed now. There's this little kind of arrow symbol next to it. If I click on that arrow, it opens up the sub layers inside it. So inside layer one, there are two sub layers, which are these two rectangles. So every time you create something on a layer, it will add it as a sub layer on there. That includes guides, you know, a single anchor point, type, whatever it is. If it's on that layer that's selected, it's going to put in there as a sub layer. So if I'm on layer one, I can click on this symbol right here and I can create a new sub layer and it just puts one inside there. Uh, these next couple of features I don't use as often. I do use clipping mask, but I don't really use this icon for it, but it is a way to do that. You can create clipping masks if you've got an image Let's say I've got a shape here and I've got an image over the top. I can select the two and I can create a clipping mask of that shape or of that object in that shape. So that's a nice feature. Like I said, I use clipping mask, but I haven't used that one, uh, that icon in my layers panel to do it. Uh, these next two, I haven't really used much, but you can collect all of your layers and export them as individual layers. And then you can also locate objects in your design using that feature. Again, these are two features I haven't used very much. Um, I should probably dig into them a little bit more because they'll probably increase my or improve my workflow. Uh, but for now, I don't use them very much. So coming up here to our layers panel, I want to point out a couple of things to you. First, you've got these little eyeballs. Those are your visibility toggles. We saw those in Photoshop as well. So if I click on that, I can hide whatever's in that layer. And even more so, when I open up this arrow in my sublayers, I can hide individual sublayers if I wanted to. So this is a great feature if we're working on something. I'm like, oh, what is behind this? Or how do I get that behind? Or how do I move it forward? Or what would it look like if it wasn't here? So that's great for just experimenting with different things, or you just need to hide it for a moment. Next to that, you'll see there's this little blank square. If I click on that, it adds a lock. So now, see when I hover over this square, I got that little pencil with a circle and a line through it. It says you can't do anything here because this layer is locked. You can't do anything with that, right? So unlock that. Now my square symbol comes up. I go to my selection tool. See, now I can click on that path and I can move that around. 
and do what I want with it because it's unlocked. So really great way to do that as well too. Next, you'll see this little colored bar. This is really cool as well too. It's a nice little feature to help you find things. So right now, this layer, everything in that layer is going to have this little blue color to it. If you notice, my bounding box is blue, right? See how it's got that blue color to it? Because it's in this blue, this layer with this blue box. And what's even nicer than that too is over here on the far right, if I open up that layer, you can see this little blue square pops up to let me know, hey, this is the sub layer that you have selected right now. So if I select on this rectangle, you can see that shifts. So if you've got a layer that's got a ton of stuff in it and you're like, where is this square? You can find it really easily. So you'll see, it'll tell you what layer it's in out here. And then when you click on the sub layer, it'll give you a little bit slightly larger square to tell you this is the exact sub layer. So it's nice for finding things, but again, we want to try to stay organized when we get into more complex things. We got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, let me show you real quick. I'm going to jump to layer two and draw a circle or ellipse real quick here. And you can see how this layer is red. And now my bounding box and all my features for that circle are red. So that's how it helps you court, you know, kind of keep track of those things. So if you don't know right away, you click on that red bounding box. Oh, there it is. Oh, there's my red square. And you can see now it has an arrow because we have something in the layer, which means there is a sub layer and that's the ellipse that we have selected. So those are some cool features with just how to do some things at layers. Uh, another thing too, you double click on the layer and it opens up your layer options panel and you can rename them. This is really good, especially if you're doing some kind of an iteration process and you're doing a logo and you wanna just iterate it more and more, you might wanna label some things, or if you're doing different variations, and I'll show you an example of that in a second. So you can rename each layer if you want to. You could also change the color of that layer. So right now, that layer is that light red, but I can change that to green if I wanted to. Some other cool features that we have here is this template option. So I use this when I bring a photograph into Illustrator and I'm gonna trace over it. So let's say I bring in a photograph of myself and I'm gonna do an illustrated self-portrait. I would bring in, create a new layer and I would place that image on that new layer. And then I'd come in here and I'd click template. And then what that does is it dims the image 50% and it automatically locks that layer. So it's kind of like taking a photograph and putting a piece of tracing paper over it and having it locked down, right? Now you can't do anything on that layer. You can't draw on top of it. You'd have to create a new layer on top and then you can begin tracing and doing the work you have. But that's a nice little feature if you're wanting to trace a photograph of something else, you can just create a template and it locks it and puts it all in place for you. Let's go ahead and cancel that. Um, and so those are just some basic features of that layers panel. The next thing we're gonna look at is the artboard panel. And so over here, it's the little vertical and horizontal rectangles, that's your artboards. And that's attached to my layers because I use them quite a bit. Again, you can also go to your Windows dropdown menu and then up here alphabetical under A is your artboards. So just like with layers, you can trash an artboard. Say, I don't want to use that anymore. It's done. Or maybe you've moved things over and it's blank, so you get rid of it. And then you've got this little symbol, the same symbol as before, so I can create a new artboard. So if I click on that, and you can see there's another artboard. Let me zoom out a little bit, right next to it. And when it creates a new artboard, it'll create it the same format size as the original. So this is what I was saying is one of the nice features of Illustrator is you can create artboards and you can create an endless number of them. I can create, I've already created four of them, right? I zoom out, you can see them all. So I can have four different artboards and I can work on this one. Then I can copy it and paste it over here and then modify the image and then copy and paste the original and modify it some more. So I can have four different iterations of the same design on four different artboards and see them all side by side. So that's a really, I enjoy that quite a bit with Illustrator. It's one of my favorite features of it. Um, you can also double click on artboards and rename them if you wanted to do that as well. You can also reorganize them. So let's say I'm gonna move some of these around so you can see this. And I'll make this a little bit bigger so it's more obvious. Okay, so you can see as I click on these shapes, even though this, square is in layer one technically right it's in layer one because it's got that blue there and this square is also in layer one because it's got that blue square but if you notice my artboard because i moved it here it's smart enough to recognize hey this is on artboard three and this is on artboard two 
So it knows what artboard it's on. Even though they're in the same layer, it can be on different artboards. So that's kind of cool. Now let's say I want to move this rectangle next to these ellipse and I want to see it side by side. So I know this is artboard three. Click here, that's artboard one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on artboard three. I'm going to hit this arrow up one spot so that artboard three is next to artboard number one. Cool, right? But nothing happened down here. So what we have to do is up here in the upper right, you got these three little bars. These are our options menu. So what it has is kind of the same features, new artboard, deleting artboards. You can duplicate an artboard if you want to. Um, this is a nice feature. Once you condense some of your designs, you can delete empty artboards. But this at the bottom here, rearrange all artboards. I'm going to click on that. So what I did was I moved that layer up. You can click and drag that up, or you can use the arrows to move them around all you want. But until you rearrange the artboards and go through this process, it won't actually move them around. So I go here, it says you've got four artboards and here's your layout options. So you can do a grid by row, which means from left to right. You can do a grid by column, which means top to bottom, um, straight across or straight down. Okay. And then you can specify how many columns you want. So I want to do two columns because I've got four artboards. So I just want two columns and I want it to go left to right, meaning so it'll go one, two, and then three, four. But I rearrange that. So now it's going to go one, three, two, four, based on my order here. Okay. Spacing, that's totally up to you. Right now it's half an inch. You can see that's perfectly fine for me. This is really important too. Move artwork with artboard. Make sure that's checked. If it's not, it's going to rearrange all the artboards and it's going to leave the artwork where it's at. You want to move them around. Okay. So I click OK. And there it is. So now it's moved artboard three next to artboard one, which is what I wanted. And then you can see I did the two columns, right? Because I only wanted two columns of artboards. And then it went by row. So left to right and left to right. So that's how they do that. So I can rearrange again. I'm going to put this blank artboard number four. I want that at the top. So move it all the way to the top. Come to my lines. Click rearrange artboards. Keep that the same. Hit OK. And that's it. So now my blank is at the top. Then my ellipse right through there. So that is kind of how you can modify and move things around with your artboard. So that's just the basics of layers and artboards. So hopefully that'll help you stay organized a little bit more. Before we kind of close this up, I want to show you. So here's an example. I was doing a logo design for a friend of mine who's doing a podcast. And you can see I've got three different artboards. So let me open my layers panel to start with, and you can see how this works. So if I click on this symbol right here, you can see I've got a blue bounding box. Right, that is my monogram number three. So there's the blue symbol there. I've renamed it so I can find it very easily. And that's the only one in there. If I click on this one here, select these, I got the red bounding box. That's this one, monogram number one. And then right here, these are pink. So that's monogram number two. So again, as I create these, and you can see this is what I thought about the iteration process and why this is kind of helpful. It's the same design, but this one is solid. This one's got the W has a little cutout and this one has the L has a cutout. So when you want to show, like make little modifications, you don't have to save this and open a new document. You can just copy paste it, make your modification, copy paste, make your modification. So you can do multiple on a single artboard or you can do depending how big it is on multiple artboards. So then I had this little globe design that I created. You can see I've got it under globe. So it's got that layer right there. So I know where it's at, but I had that on its own artboard because I wanted that separate. And then it kind of just, morphed over into these designs right here. So I had the monogram here and I didn't like it. So I took just the globe part, put it in there and then did some variations in that. Um, one of the things you can see too here, um, my artboards, I don't think I named my artboards, but one, two, six. So at some point I had three, four and five and deleted those. So I had a lot of other work that I got rid of um, once I cleaned it up and kind of came to that point of like, this is what I want to work with. And you'll notice too, that I resized this one artboard to fit all three of these on it just because it had more room there, right? So real quickly, if I click on my artboard over here in my toolbar, you'll see this little symbol. It looks like a piece of paper, with a couple lines on it. That's your artboard tool. If I click on that, this allows me to like edit and modify whatever artboard I have selected. So at this point I can, it puts a little bounding box on. I can re, oh, I don't want to do that. Okay, I just want to resize the artboard. There it is. So I had the artwork selected. That's why I did that. So I can resize an individual artboard 
Because remember I said, when you create a new artboard, it'll automatically do it the same size as the original, but you might have to modify or you might want to change it up um, based on what you're doing. So you can resize individual artboards just like that. You can even move artboards. So they're telling me, hey, it's going to move your artwork with it, which is fine, right? But here's the thing. See how I just grabbed that pink LW? That's because I put that artboard over it. So now it moved that one as well. So you got to be careful with moving things because once you cover something with that artboard, it's going to assume that that stuff is now in that artboard. So if I grab this, see how it grabbed all three of those? So that's kind of the things you just need to be aware of when you're moving stuff. But that's a nice little feature if you want to customize uh, different size artboards within one work. And when you're done, I just click on the selection tool and it just locks everything in place. So that's kind of how the artboards and layer panels are used in an actual work of art and how you can keep yourself organized. I don't think I went over this, but I'm going to go through right now. If you want to move layers, that's kind of important, right? Let's say monogram, I want to move all the way to the top. If I click and hold on that layer and I drag, you can see it turns to a fist and I can move layers above other layers. You can also, let's say I want to move badge one into badge two and three. I can click and drag it into an existing layer and then it drops it in and makes it its own sub layer. So now it's a sub layer within that. So probably should have mentioned that earlier, but I figured it out at the end here and got it to you guys. So that's a really cool thing to know for keeping yourself organized with layers. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys. I really appreciate making these videos for you. Um, until next time, this is Mr. Gratzel. Have a great day.